is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, oh, my anchor holds within Hey, good evening, Sacred Exchange. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with you all. It's good to gather together with the saints to worship, to fellowship, to hear the word, to worship the Lord in unity and in joy and gladness for great gratitude with all that he's done. We're going to open up in prayer, go into worship, and... Um, yeah, just go before the presence of the Lord. Father, we are grateful. We're grateful in this house this evening. God. We're grateful for the, the freedom that we have to gather in this place, Lord, without the fear of having to look over our shoulder, without the fear of having to be uh, dragged out of this place, Lord. But we are to assemble together as a one body, as one church, Lord, in total freedom the spirit of freedom, and in the, the body of freedom, in the physical as well. So, Father, we ask that you would come and make yourself known in this room, I pray. That you would come and have your way in every heart, every mind, every spirit, Lord, in this place. God, I pray that where eyes need to be open, that eyes would be open, God. And where ears need to be perked up, I pray this evening that they would be perked up in listening, God. I pray that you would just do a work in this church, do a work in our lives, God. Not just those around us, but would you do a work in me, I pray. Would you start right here? If there's revival to happen, I pray that it happens in me, oh God. I pray, Lord, that you'd come and make me uncomfortable with my sin, Lord that you'd come and make me uncomfortable with the place that I'm at, Lord, that, that I desire more than just the superficial, Lord. Oh, God, that we would desire more than just what this world has to offer us. God, I pray that you would come and move in a way that we've not expected you to, a way that we, we didn't see coming, a way that only you could do it, Lord. Come have your way, Lord. 
pray that you would, uh, you would bless this service from beginning to end, that you pour out your spirit in a fresh way, that you come and rekindle, re, re, uh, ignite flames and passion where it's been lost, God, I pray. Yes. Have your way, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Oh, the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed, I'm a child of God, yes, I am. A ransom, oh, his grace runs deep. And while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Oh, the Son. remind someone in this room tonight that he is for you. He's not against you.
against you. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe the lie. He's not against you. Oh, he is for you. You are for me, you're not against me. I am who you say I am. You are for me, you're not against me. Oh, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. So let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts, oh, fill it with your life. Cause we are here for you. Oh, we are here for you. Come on, make this your prayer this evening. To you, our hearts. To you, our hearts are open. Nothing 
is hidden from your sight. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are what it is Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And you alone are holy, holy you are worthy. And God, let's
Jesus. Let faith arise and let all the grief. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Oh, who can testify of his goodness? Who can testify of his power in your life? Love. 
heaven come to heaven come to earth have your way in this place pursue him for a little bit longer just to, can we just seek his face in this room for just a little bit longer if you're not really sure how to do that go ahead and just uh, close your eyes and just kind of just start to talk to him as if he were here right with you just kind of navigate through that conversation with the father someone else's experience we want to know you that's my God it's our God not someone else's God but you're my God Shining in the light of your glory. 
Jesus, I want to see you. I see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. You pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, um, as Pastor Justin was singing the, the last song before this, and I was thinking about how good God is. You know, is there anybody in here that can agree that God is good? Hey man, he is good. He is good, right? And, and, he, and he is capable and able to do anything. And as I was thinking about that thought, I was wondering to myself, how many of us came in here tonight with some type of a stronghold? Whether it be a way of thinking, whether it be a, a, a pattern of acting, whether it be an addiction, how many came in here with a stronghold and do you know that you're in the house of God and because you're in the house of God he can do it he can take that away from you right now right here in this place it's going to take though it's going to take you opening your heart like the song says open the eyes of the heart it's going to take you opening up your heart and allowing the spirit in is there anybody here tonight willing to allow the spirit of God in Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to challenge you on something. I'm going to challenge you on something. If in your life right now, you have a stronghold somewhere, and I, I can be honest with you, that's probably all of us. If in your life, you've got a stronghold somewhere, I just want you to just raise your hand up in the air right now. Just raise your hand. And just hold your hand up. Just hold it up in the air. And I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Father. Father, we come before you tonight. Lord, children of the most high God. Lord, and your word says, your word says that, Lord, if you be with us, nothing can be against us. Lord, your word says that, Lord, everything is possible with you. So, Lord, I just pray for those that, that are here that have their hand raised. Lord, and those that are online that are watching with their hand raised. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would demolish that stronghold. Lord, you would take it away, Lord. Lord, that they would walk out of here with freedom. Lord, they would walk out of here with victory. Lord, that you would be the ruler and the reign of their lives, we pray, O oh Lord. For you are good. And we give you all the glory and the praise. Have your way here in this service tonight, Lord. Lord, speak in our brother Pat as he brings forth the word tonight. Lord, and we just, we just glorify you here. We thank you that you're here. Continue, Lord, in this service. Spirit of God, have your way. Move as you see fit in this place. Lord, that we might have a touch of you tonight. Lord, we desire a touch of you, a touch from you. So have your way here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good and all the time. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing? Amen. 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 It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements. Man, I'm excited tonight, man. My brother Pat is coming up here. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, um, our Reaching for the Fringe toy night is December now, uh, 16th, December 16th, 5.30 to 7.30. Um, and you can see Elder Deb for, for information about that. Stronger Together, 40-plus singles. Uh, Gingerbread House Building, Saturday, December 17th at 6.30. That's uh, at Carol Vada's house. You can see Elder Carol to sign up uh, in for the address. Join us for a Christmas, uh, special Christmas service. That's this Sunday, December 18th at 10 a.m. Um, also join us on Christmas Day, December 25th at 10 a.m. for a great service. Hey, if we're honoring God, right, it's this season, we're celebrating his birth, right, we might want to be in his house. Amen? That's just, that's just me, I'm just saying. Rally Point Men's Breakfast, Saturday, January 7th at 10 a.m., 
Uh, we have our guest speaker of Pastor Donovan Woodruff that's coming here to bring the word. That's going to be powerful. So I want to encourage all you guys here. It's okay right now. If you want to take out your calendars, circle the seventh and put down, I got to be here. Somebody say, I got to be here. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I have the ushers come forward? <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we all stand? I want to encourage you tonight because do you know that you're in the one place where every struggle every issue every problem that you have can be taken care of right here at the altar you're in the one place where that can happen so don't leave here tonight don't leave here with the same struggle you came in with. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for the offering, Lord. We, we thank you for all of that, Lord. But we thank you for those that are here tonight. Lord, because every moment, every situation, Lord, whether they believe it or not, is ordained by you. So, Lord, you ordain this moment. So, Lord, have your way. Lord, show out in front of your people tonight. Lord, use your servant, Pat. Lord, because you have ordained this moment for him to speak. So, Lord, free him up, Lord, from any, any distraction. Free him up, Lord, from any, from any nervousness. Lord, allow him to just to be bold as lions before your people. We love you so much, and we desire you. So, Lord, you have your way. We, got, we give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. God, I pray that you'll have your way in me. Lord, I'm just an unworthy vessel. I pray, God, that you will speak through me. 
Lord God, empty me, empty me of myself, and Holy Spirit, come in me and just fill, fill me up with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, church. Good evening. All right. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Elisa. Pastor Justin. All right. Checking out. So, tonight, my text is in Matthew 19:26. It's not going to be long, so I'm just going to just read it to you real fast. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. So, with God all things are possible. That's really what I want to focus on. Um, I think it's pretty much a given that with men it's impossible. I know I can't do anything. I, I, I can't do anything at all. Uh, but with God all things are possible. You know, so I want to, I want to challenge your faith tonight. Um, I, I've had faith my whole life and what you would say is faith, what the world would say is faith. I have believed in God. I have believed that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came and died on the cross for my sins. I was, I was raised in the church. From the time that I was born, my mother started taking me to church. So I was raised to know these things, and I have never once taken them, from, taken them to be anything but true. So I was, I mean, Sundays, you know, it was Sunday morning, Sunday night, midweek service. When I got to the age, it was, it was youth group, you know, so I'm going to church four or five times a week. I believe it. I believe every, every bit of it, beyond a shadow of a doubt. When I was about, I think I was about 18 years old, I decided that I liked doing my own thing, okay, and I backslid. And even when I was in youth group and when I was in church and when I was doing this four, four or five times a week, whatever it was, I was still, I went to public school, okay? And I was no different than any one of these, these other kids in public school that didn't go to church. I still had a mouth on me like a trucker, you know? And I was one thing, I'm in church, I'm gonna be good. And I, I never stopped believing, but I, I was a different person. You know, and I was always half in, half out, what the you know, Bible calls lukewarm. And when I hit about 18, I was like, okay, see you later. And I started to party. For the next 15 years, I, I partied until I was 33 years old. Alcoholic, like you wouldn't believe. I, I, there was a point in my life when, when I was living in Pawtucket by myself, and I would black out every night. It was my goal, was to black out every single night. You know, I was smoking, smoking weed, doing other drugs. I was doing whatever I could, make myself feel good. You know, just the dating scene, everything. Didn't care. I, I didn't care. But I never, I never stopped believing in God. And it would, God would throw things. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy. I can remember being outside of a frat house, at URI, drunk, or at least drinking and having a conversation about Adam and Eve with a theology major or something like that. I remember sitting on a bar stool next to the guy who wrote the, the book Haunted Rhode Island about every haunted place with ghosts and all this very demonic guy talking about God. There were friends of mine, I went to the bar seven nights a week, seven nights a week, and I was, it was like cheers, everybody knew my name. It was ridiculous. And uh, there were people that if somebody, like, you get this person would start, I don't know, cursing God or something like that, somebody would come get me and, here, talk to Pat, because I could sit and preach on a bar stool, because I never stopped believing in God. But that's where my faith ended, okay? My faith ended in knowing that he was there. And for the last, just about year, since I've been coming here, um, and I, I, in that time, I was, I would go back to church, you know, I had, I, at one point I was going to a church and I was a youth leader. I was a youth leader that was leading youth and going to get drunk at night when I got home, but I was a youth leader. And uh, the, <laughs> you look back on it and you're like, <laughs> but um, in that time, I would, if something was wrong, 
I knew God, God can do anything. So something's wrong in my life. I'm going to go back to church. But it never stuck. It never, ever stuck. And because it wasn't serious. If, if nothing else, if sitting on a bar stool, telling somebody that God is real, man. You know, this is absolutely. He created heaven and earth. Jesus is the son of God. He died on the sins for you. While you're sitting on a bar stool, hypocrite. Okay? Hypocrite. All day long. I was the definition of a prodigal. Okay? And... So that's, that's where my faith ended. In the last year, it's been different because I finally decided to stop being a hypocrite and God changed something in me. Uh, he has grown me exponentially and he's been doing, we, we, I've been having a, a, a faith battle, if you will, because the, where my faith ended was, I was always the, the go-to guy. Okay, I'm a, I've been a volunteer fireman for 15 years and got into EMS and promoted and all this kind of stuff. And I was the answer guy. Hey, Pat, you know, what do we do about this and that and all this kind of stuff? I was the answer guy. I like to do things myself. And I was maybe part of that to being a man and being a fixer and a doer. But I always figured stuff out. Okay, and it was, I never, I never relied on anything or any, well, some anyone's, but anything else other than what I could do, who I could talk to, who I could lean on, who, everything was me. And what I want to challenge you on is your day-to-day -day life and what God can do for you in terms of you relying on him, okay? How many of you, I mean, I, it's got to be everybody in the room. How many of you have something in your life that you want that it seems like it's immovable, that there's, you know, and it's not, I'm not talking about, you know, I am talking about big things. I'm not talking about your Lamborghini. I'm not talking about your million dollar job. I'm not talking about any of that kind of stuff. This is not the prosperity gospel. Don't get me wrong. But what I mean is that prodigal, you know, that's me. You know, my, my, my mom, who's in the room tonight, is uh, prayed for me for years, you know, and that prodigal, that that marriage that's on the rocks, that that cousin, that brother, that sister, that mother, that that husband, wife, whoever that you want to see saved, that that disease that that you that you need to be cured of, or your loved one needs to be cured of. This is something with God. All things are possible. It doesn't say some things are possible. It doesn't say some things if I think they're possible. It doesn't have anything to do with your logic. It doesn't have anything to do with how it looks to you. It's got everything to do with the fact that God created heaven and earth. And it's got nothing to do with you or what you think is possible. God operates outside of what's possible. La raise Lazarus from the dead. Make the blind to see, the deaf to hear. I mean, this, these are things that you go, no, you know, that, that doesn't happen. Your logic doesn't matter. His ways are not our ways. So, like I said, there's, it says all things. It doesn't say, there's no parameters on that, it says all. That word all, I feel like gets, gets skipped a lot. You know, it's, yeah, God can do all things. And you totally take that for granted. You know, it says to cast all your cares on him. All. All means all. All doesn't mean some, doesn't mean a few, doesn't mean the ones that I like, the ones that I don't like, the things that I'm, I'm, un I'm comfortable with, the things that I'm uncomfortable with. It means all. There is an if verse, and it's in Mark. Mark 9.23 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him who believes. That if is put on us. Okay? It's if you can believe it. Jesus was, it says, it, it says that he couldn't do miracles in his own hometown. That couldn't. It doesn't mean that he physically could not or he, he couldn't. It was the, the lack of faith. You know, instead of, it, instead of being like, wow, Jesus is, look at all these things that Jesus has done. You know, look, he's made the, the, the lame to walk. 
the blind to see. He's, he, at that point, I don't think he had raised the dead yet. But it's all these things. Instead, they're like, ah, that's just Jesus. You know, I, I know Jesus. He's Mary and Joseph's son. No big deal. I know that guy. I can't do anything. <laughs> you know, he's just a little kid that was running around. That lack of faith robbed those people. It, it, there's people that their lives could have been absolutely drastically changed. But they were, eh. I mean, do you have that? What kind of faith do you have? Is it, well, you know, Jesus, yeah, he can do anything. Or is, or, or is that actually real to you? And it, it was never real to me. It was never real to me. It was never a day-to-day -day like, wow, God can, God can do this, you know? And it's almost like crazy faith, you know? And it's, it's a faith that people, excuse me, people don't necessarily, that are on the outside or even sometimes in the church, will understand. You know, it's just like, yeah. Like, I don't see the problem with believing that Jesus can do anything. Because he says it. If you can believe, all things are possible. You know, and, it's that, that, and it stresses me out because it's like people, I mean, I've got people that I worry about in my own life that I'm like, I would really love to see that person saved. You know, it is, it is his will that none should perish. None. Also very, like, it means none. <laughs> There's really no, there really is no other word. <laughs> and all things are possible. If, if it's his will that none should perish and that all things are possible, why are you sitting there doubting? It's, and it applies to many, many other situations. So there's a, a quote by Ian e. Bounds that I, I love greatly. Uh, if we had more of Elijah's praying, marvels would be greater than those things we call marvels today. God would not seem so strange, so far away, and so feeble in action. Everything is tame and feeble to us because our praying is so tame and feeble. What does prayer take? Faith. Because if, if you're praying without faith, why are you praying? It takes that faith. And faith, is, I'm not saying that this is easy in any way, shape, or form. It, it is so hard for me to let go and let God. It is so hard for me because I am that guy. I am that guy who wants to do, wants to fix, wants to have the conversation, wants to push, wants to make the point, wants to just, I'm a, I'm a confronter. <laughs> and that's just who I am. I don't do well with elephants in the room. I don't do any of that. That's just not me. But when you have to be still and know that he is God, it is incredibly hard. And faith is, faith, it's tough, you know? I mean, look at, look at Peter. Peter was walking on water, <laughs> like physically walking on water. And he started looking around, and he got scared. He was already walking on water. It wasn't like, it wasn't a question of getting out of the boat and seeing, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk on this water. He was doing it, and he started looking around, and he started to worry, and Jesus had to pick him up. You know, it's not easy. This is, it's been a wild year for me, <laughs> believe me, and, and it's, it's tough. But if you just push through it, you can, that, there is nothing that God can't do. Like, how perfect was that song? And, it's, and do I think that's a coincidence? No, I think it's a God incidence. <laughs> uh, but it's tough. You know, I understand it. Uh, and it's, trust me, <laughs> I'm going through it. And, but if you just believe, all things are possible. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I, that verse speaks to me the most because I'm that, I'm that doer. You know, and it's, I look at a situation, whether it's a, you know, I look at things medically sometimes. I've been on emergency call. I have thousands of emergency calls. And... You know, I, I haven't been doing as much lately, so it's not like it's not a, a current thing, but I can think of times that it's like, well, this is how that's going to go, you know, and that's it. But that doesn't, that's my thoughts, that's my training, that's me operating in my own logic. My logic means nothing to God, absolutely nothing. We need to remember that. 
Just because something is logical to us doesn't mean anything. It is God operates. His ways are higher than our ways. They are so much better than our ways. And not for nothing, but he loves you. You, okay? He says that he's thinking about you every second of every day. The, man, the, the God who created heaven and earth is thinking about you every single second of the day. And it, what else does it say? <laughs> All things work together for the good for those who love God. All. Um, <laughs> I had to do a little math there, sorry. <laughs> My, I'm not really a point guy, so I don't have like, I'm not a one, two, three point kind of guy. But I guess my second point to this, and probably the most important, is faith takes submission. Uh, submission on a few levels. Submission, one, that you don't know best. That God operates outside of you, your mind, your logic, your experiences. Okay, because the majority of people, their history dictates what they feel, how they view life, how they, the lens that they view life from, okay? And this is my lens. I don't want any other lens. This lens is perfect. My lens is skewed like crazy. <laughs> and it's, I, it's important to, to remember that we are very, 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 imperfect vessels. We are no good. And God is very good. Um, this is the, the instruction book of life. There is not a situation, I used to say this to people because in the EMT world we have a protocol book and a bunch of people that are paid a lot more than me sat down and said, these are the situations that an EMT is going to go through. Every single thing that we can think of that an EMT is going to go through. And we're going to create a book it's very thick, and there are literal steps. This is what you do. Airway, breathing, circulation, stop bleeding, all this stuff. Boom, 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 boom. On different levels, all sorts of things. This is in detail what you're supposed to do and everything you're ever gonna run into. That is this. Everything that you're ever going to run into is in this book. Know this book. Love this book. This is the living, breathing words of God. That is a powerful thing. I used to, there was so many times over the last year, I'm like, God, what am I supposed to do? Give me something. And it always came from here. Always. So it also takes submission to those instructions. Submission, submission to believe that despite what you may have experienced or come to believe that the word of God is true and infallible. People are either in submission to God and his truths, or they're in submission to sin and their own desires or agendas or ideas. I firmly believe that. Because I had all the faith in the world that God was God. But when I was sitting on that bar stool, I was doing what I wanted. And that was not what God wanted. And he was graceful enough to keep me alive through it. How many times I drunk drove? Sorry, Mom. But there's so many times that I was literally thousands of times that I have gotten into a car completely impaired. And I had a little thing that I love to do, and sorry, Pastor West, <laughs> sorry. But I had a little thing that I, the drunker that I was, the faster I drove. It's a great idea. It was an excellent idea. I thought I was bulletproof. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and it didn't, God kept me alive and used, somehow used me. Why? I don't know. But he used even this fake hypocrite of a, of a guy that every once in a while would speak a little truth into somebody. And my faith tells me that it was in the right moment for that person. You know, and I hope I planted seeds completely unintentionally, unintentionally, but I hope I did. Uh, Everybody sins, okay? Submission doesn't mean you're not going to sin. Nobody is perfect. I sin every day. But there's a difference between living in sin and sinning. 
and living in sin is the thing that we need to turn from. I, I, I'm going to throw this in, but it's a, a quote that I, I heard yesterday. I'm going to have to paraphrase it. The devil believes in God. The devil believes that Jesus is the one and only son of God, that he came to die for our sins. He believes in the Holy Spirit. He believes in absolutely everything that a Christian believes. The difference is the devil has not turned from his sin. And that is a big one. That's where the submission to this book comes in. You're not going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. So, get that 20 on the dot. Are we submitted to God and commit sins? Or are we submitted to sin and committing acts of Christianity? That's my question for you. And how big is your faith? Because I've had to realize that I'm nothing. And I, I, I know that I'm nothing. And not like I'm worthless or anything like that. You are worth it to God. He sent his only son to die for you. And it was a terrible, terrible death. The worst way you could possibly be killed at that time. And it's a drastic truth that he loves you. The fact that he would do that for you, for each and every one of you. He knows every number of the hairs on your head. He cares about you. He cares about the little things. So, I would urge you to have faith, big faith, not just in who he is, what he can do, and I would urge you to submit. That's all I got. Amen. 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 Can we give it up for Pat one more time? Yeah. That's just You know, uh, Pat came to me, and he, he's like, man, you know, God's been really speaking to me. And, and, and he's been really talking to me about just this, this faith issue. You know, and it, it does take crazy faith to believe that all things are possible with God. It takes crazy faith. Because guess what? All things are possible, but all things ain't easy. Right? All things ain't easy, and what happens is when we get into the struggle and life starts to get really hard for us, then we abandon the thought that all things are possible with God, and we start to focus on our life issues and the struggles that we have in life, and, and, and it goes right out the window, and we lose our faith. But if we could just hold on just a little bit to who God is, hold on to the fact that he is God in all things, all things possible with him. See, nothing's, nothing for us, if we try to do it in our own strength, if we try to do it uh, with our own power, we fail every single time. That's why we have to give it over to God. And, and, and as I've been privileged to watch our brother Pat grow, it's been a blessing to me because I've seen him transfer from that place of trying to do it on his own power to that place of trusting God to do it on God's power. You know, amen, amen, amen. It takes crazy faith to believe that all things are possible. I, I believe that. Anybody here believe that? Anybody in here have crazy faith tonight? Can we all stand? You know, it's funny. It's, it's funny. Is there anybody in here have crazy faith tonight? And everybody's like, hey, what's, what's he about to do? Sometimes our, test get, our faith gets tested. Sometimes, sometimes we have to be willing to take a small step for God in order for God to come in and do the impossible in our lives. And I want to ask you a question tonight. I want to ask you if you truly believe is there anyone in here that truly, I mean, truly believes that God is real? Do you believe that he can do anything? Do you believe that all things are possible with God? Then I'm going to challenge you. 
here's the challenge for you tonight. You know, earlier I talked about strongholds and I talked about what in your life are you struggling with? What in your life are you having problems with? Are you worried about? Are you anxious over? What in your life that's bringing you to a place of doubt, that's bringing you to a place where maybe all things ain't possible with God? Because he hasn't done this yet. Maybe all things aren't possible with God because he hasn't done that yet. If that's you, I want you to come to the altar. Because I'm going to call our brother Pat back up. And I'm going to have him pray for you. Because I believe that every moment is an ordained moment from God. And that means that you're here for a reason. That means that you are here meant to hear this word that this man had to say tonight. So the, the response to the word is to respond. That's the response to the word. Respond. So if that's you, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't think that someone's going to look at you weird or, or, or talk about you behind your back. Just come on up to the altar because I know that there's somebody, there's some few, there's a few of you that have come in here this night with something on your heart something on your mind, some struggle that you have to deal with that you want to give over to God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 We're going we're gonna to sit in this for a second because God's speaking to somebody. This is a, this is a, this is a vital moment, a vital moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Precious God, thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Father, all things, all things are possible with you. Lord, somehow we, we get it confused and we think that when we come of age... Lord, that when we come, become adults, somehow, Lord, we can handle it. Somehow we don't need you any longer, only in, in the emergencies, only during the times when we call out your name. But, Lord, I, I pray right now, Lord, that, Lord, every single person in this room and watching online, Lord, that they would make a, a commitment to you right now to need you, to desire you every second of every day, no matter what they're going through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pat, I'm going to ask you to pray for them. Father God, we come before you tonight, Lord. God, I pray, Lord God, that people in this room will have faith. Lord God, I want to stand in the gap for the people that are struggling with that faith, that, that are struggling with believing that anything is possible with you, that there is something that you can't do. That is a lie. That is a lie from the devil. Lord, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that the reality of you will become real to everybody in this room, those at this altar and everybody else in this room. God, I pray that you will fill hearts tonight, that you will reveal yourself, that you will show, show us all that you can do anything, that there is nothing that is beyond your touch. You created heaven and earth. You have hung every star in the sky. You know them by name. You know every person at this altar by name. I pray, Lord Jesus, that that will become real. I pray that you will reveal yourself in each and every individual that is in this room tonight. God, let us submit to you. Let us submit to you in every aspect of our lives. Let it, don't let us hold you off and just only let you into certain aspects of our lives, Lord Jesus. Let, let it be a complete submission where every fiber of our being our heart, soul, mind, and strength is given over to you because we are not worthy. There is nothing that we can do. With men, this is impossible. With you, all things are possible. Lord, let us believe that. Help me to believe that, God. Help me to know that, Lord. Start it with me. In your name we ask this.
Hallelujah. As everybody is preparing to just leave, I want you to know that this altar is open, right? And just because some have to leave, you don't have to. You can stay here at the altar and you can tarry before God. If you have to leave, that's fine. But know that this altar is open. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for Pat, Lord. We thank you for his heart. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're, you're God. Hallelujah. Lord, somehow you saw fit to bring us into your family. Somehow, Lord, you gave grace and mercy and you brought us into your family. We thank you for that, Lord, and we weren't deserving of it. No way that we could earn it. That's why you are God in our lives. So Lord, I just pray for those that do have to leave. I pray, Father, you would protect them as they leave this place. But, Lord, I, I just pray that you would continue to minister here in this sanctuary. Lord, as those that are at the altar continue, Lord, to hand over, Lord, to you the things that they have in their lives, their strongholds, their struggles. Precious God, and I pray you would meet him, meet them right here, right now. In Jesus' name, amen.